So I binge watched Young, Famous, and African over the weekend. <laughs> watched every episode, um, like a, a marathon. I don't typically watch reality TV, but I was at a party and we had it on and we just watched the whole thing. <clears throat> I have some favorites. I have some not so favorites and we're gonna talk about it. So who's my favorite on the show? Kenny, Kenny, yeah, she's my favorite, favorite on the show. Um, I just like her, like she, I love how she's like super nosy, always in everybody's business, but she's not like vindictive. She doesn't like, even though in the beginning of the series, they kind of made it seem as though she was gonna be the one that's shit stirring and stuff like that, but she wasn't. She was like, she's actually like, it seems to be a genuine person a caring person and is actually just looking out for people and trying to help people solve their situations. But I love how curious she is about what everyone has going on, how nosy she is, <laughs> um, and how intelligent she is when she like draws like conclusions, analysis about these people. So I really do enjoy her in the show. Um, yo, I feel sorry for these people in these reality TV shows because like we were watching at a party and everybody in the room had something to say. <laughs> And I don't know if it's because these are, because it's like, we're not used to, as black Africans, we're not used to seeing our people on reality TV shows. And I feel like Nigerians especially have the worst insults. It's like spiritual, <laughs> like the way Nigerians insult people is like, it's like a spiritual thing. Um, so like, we were just going off. We were just like, uh, we always had a comment and I cannot even imagine, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the show, I mean, some people didn't like the show. Some people hated the ending. Personally, I enjoyed it. I liked Nadia. I wish that she didn't change her hair so much because it was like so confusing. Like she just became unrecognizable. She didn't have like a, a, a unified brand because every episode she had some crazy hairstyle. I liked, uh, what's his name? Swanky Jerry. I loved his style. I wish that he had more of a storyline um, because he was just kind of like, looking fashionable and had no sort of purpose on the show and i heard that he's really funny in real life so i wonder why he didn't show more of his personality on the show why he didn't like even though he might not have shown his love life he could have still been a little bit more like what's her name kayani even though like i don't know his personality in real life maybe he's not nosy like that but i feel like he could have like pushed himself a little bit more into the mix and gotten involved a little bit more i just felt like he was lacking and then obviously Annie, everybody's talking about Annie and Two Faces relationship. <laughs> I think uh, the things that I could say on the surface is that homegirl, we're all praying for you. I think a good therapy session would really help you. I think not just one, I think she needs a lot of therapy. Um, it just seems to me as though she doesn't value herself. And because she doesn't value herself, she allows, you know, him to treat her however he treats her. What I found very interesting about the whole dynamic between Annie and what's the other girl, Zuri. I don't know why people even like Zari. She was annoying. But the thing about her that I thought was interesting was that how is like, how is your husband going to be in a room? And then this woman pulls him to the side to have a conversation with him. That's so disrespectful. Like, and I'm not saying it's disrespectful for the woman to do it. I'm saying it's disrespectful for your husband to do it. You know, and that's the thing, like, I think that there's no accountability for Nigerian men. Um, and they're just allowed in society to be spoiled. Like, I'm Nigerian originally, you know, um, and so I just see it a lot, especially within Nigeria. I feel like Nigeria breeds the worst men. <laughs> like, Nigerian men outside of Nigeria, they know how to act accordingly. Like, some of the best human beings I've ever met. But in terms of in Nigeria, Nigeria enables men to be abusive in relationships. And abusive is not just physical abuse. Abusive is emotional abuse, too. And I find with the Two-Face and Anne situation, he's very emotional and abusive to her. And that's what I see in the show. To the point whereby she almost... It's kind of its kind of crazy because like after 10 years of being together or however many, 19, I don't know how long they've been together... 20 years almost, the fact that like, you still have to, you're like walking on eggshells when you're around him. You always like, you're, you care up, like when she was fighting with Zuri and she got embarrassed because of Zuri embarrassed her in front of her, in front of Two-Face. But you should be upset with Two-Face, your husband, for acting, for stirring the pot. And to me, 
like to, to be honest i'm not surprised by his behavior i've seen it a lot in nigerian men and i'm just gonna break it down for you for people that don't understand his, his the way he's moving the way he's acting and why it works right um so there's a lot of poverty in nigeria right um, upward mobility is very difficult in nigeria so it's not easy for people to come from nothing and make it up right so for her she's caught a big fish you know and it's not in the case it's not the situation in nigeria where you look at like america you can work at CVS and you could be bringing home $3,000 a month. I don't know how much they make, but you could be bringing thousands of dollars a month working at CVS, right? Working at McDonald's. I don't know how much you make at McDonald's, but you're going to make a few thousand dollars a month working at McDonald's. You know, you're going to make, even if you work, even if you, and so if you have a degree, like she has a computer science degree, a computer scientist is making like $200,000 a year, right? So, but unfortunately, because of the way Nigeria is, people don't make that much money. So even somebody that's like working at a bank in the corporate sector of a bank might be bringing home $1,000 a month. So there's a little bit more desperation for, so you can live a normal life, right? And so because of that, men who are the gatekeepers of wealth in Nigeria, and it's only the 1% of men who are the gatekeepers of wealth in Nigeria, they make it difficult to access the wealth. Obviously, like there's so many issues with corruption in the country and all these things, but I'm just talking about how the social dynamics or the socioeconomic dynamics are in the country. So the fact that you see somebody that's making as much money as Two-Face, he's a big deal, right? And so every woman wants him just from the fine. And then in addition to that, he's famous. So, <clears throat> so in addition to that, in addition to that, he's famous. So a man like that in that kind of environment where people are literally like struggling to live, right? Even in the middle class, they're making $1,000 a month in the middle class. Yes, the standard of living is, is different in Nigeria, but still, you don't have the same freedoms that you would have in an economy where you're able to make, you know, $3,000 a month working at McDonald's. I'm making an estimate. I don't know how much people make at McDonald's, but it can't, like, $3,000 a month in America is like... Like, considering that you're paying for your housing, you're paying for all those things, you're living in poverty, in a version of poverty. Um, and But in, in Nigeria, typically, the housing... People don't live on their own because of these economic situations. So people typically live with their families, uh, live in com more communal-style living. You're probably not paying rent if you live in... Like, most uh, people don't leave their households until they get married. So you're probably not paying rent in your house. And that's just for you, like... So $1,000 a month, you're probably not paying rent. You're probably not paying for, unless you're married, you and your husband are sharing that. So maybe you guys are bringing 2000 a month back home. But anyway, my point is the standard of living in Nigeria is difficult. So she's caught a big fish and every woman wants him. So that's kind of the mentality. It's a survival mentality that she has to protect. She has to make sure that she's his number one choice. That's the dynamics of her brain, right? She has to make sure she's his number one choice. But the thing that confuses me is that because you're famous, she says she's done 200 movies, she has the ability to create her own wealth, right, outside of him. Even though it makes it, Nigeria makes it very difficult, but I think if people change their mindset, look at the internet, look at the world, you can create services outside of Nigeria for the world, as she's done with Netflix, she doesn't need to look to him for money. She doesn't need to look to him for survival, so from that mindset, when she comes out of her survival mindset and she then focuses on her mental health, right? This is what I think she needs to do. I think she needs therapy, like serious therapy to understand the issues that she's you know, dealing with. Um, when she does that, she can then uh, have a very different mindset. When it comes to Two-Face, the, like, the way he's navigating, let me tell you, let me break down the deal, the bargain, right? The way it works is these rich men, they have so many options. There's so many women that want them. Literally, like, think about every woman in that country <laughs> wants a two-face because most women that in Nigeria are living in, uh, I think 70 million people are living in extreme poverty in Nigeria, and then um, what percent? The middle class is not that, you know, the middle class, even at the middle class level, 
they still want a two-faced because he's living the extravagant lifestyle. And even in America, people are still going to look to him. But the level of desperation in America is different because at the end of the day, in, in America, you're still going to eat. You're, you can still go buy yourself a Chanel bag. You know, it's not your livelihood. You see what I'm saying? But literally, these men are literally giving these women their opportunity to have access to wealth. And that's why the desperation is so much more. Um, because people are just people want to just survive on the basic level. And on the other level, they also want to be lavish and, and you know, and show off what they have. So the bargain here is, look, I might cheat on you. I'm a musician. I have so many options. He has more options than the even, well, I mean, because he's famous, he'll have even more options than even like the billionaire because he's famous, right? So he has so many options. So the deal is, look, I will cheat on you, but you're going to have all the designers. That's why you see her with Birkin bags. I know I was watching with some people and they were saying the Birkins are, the Birkin bag is fake and stuff like that. No, it's not. It's probably very real. The reason why it would be real is because that's the deal. You get all these lavish things, but you're not going to get the emotional support and security that you need. That's kind of the deal. And a lot of these women sell their soul for, for that because they don't see that they have other options. Now, someone like Anne, who is, I mean, she has millions of followers on social media. She's on Netflix now. She can do better than that, but she doesn't believe that she can do better. Why? Because society will tell her that she's not worthy if she leaves Two Face. Because there's also a lot of shame on women in Nigeria that leave someone as wealthy as a Two Face, you know, because because of the situation with in poverty, right? Because of it's like I don't know, yeah, you guys have to go watch the movie on Orthodox on Netflix about a woman that leaves the Hasidic Jew community. Is this mentality? It's a brainwashing, and you know the brainwashing prison is in your mind. It just tells women that you're not worthy without a man. And if you have a famous man, if you leave that famous man, you're less worthy. Now you are nothing. That's what it teaches you, right? But it's a lie. And she's like, <laughs> you know, it's a lie. Even though, like, it's hard for women in Nigeria to become financially successful. It's much harder than it is for men because men are the gatekeepers of finances in Nigeria. So it's difficult, but it's not impossible. And now that she's an international star... And she can create wealth for herself outside of Nigeria without him. She can even do it with the money that he gives her. But she can do that. So there's no reason for her to even stay with him. And it's like a question about her mentality. And that's where the therapy will free her mind. Because I think she needs to figure out how to value herself. When it comes to him, we see him, you know, being lavish at the wedding and all that stuff, taking her to these like romantic places, that's all part of the, I don't wanna call it a scam, but it's part of the illusion. It's part of what these men in these wealthy positions do to trap these women. Because actually, what he's doing there is that it's not really necessarily about her, it's really about showing the world, this is what I do for these women, therefore more women will chase him, right? So when these wealthy men, wealthy Nigerian men, you know, they spoil their kids, they, they spoil their kids, or they, they buy all these lavish things for their girlfriends, these Chanel bags, all these things, they take them on these romantic trips, and it, when they're showcasing it, <laughs> it's not because they, they want you to have that, it's because they want to show other women, this is what I do for my people, so more women will chase them. That's actually the mentality. <laughs> and so with her, it's just kind of, at the end of the day, Chanel bags, Birkin bags, lavish trips, that's not going to help your spirit. That's not going to help your soul. That's not going to help your heart, right? And it's not going to stop your man from cheating. So the question is, you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe that you are worthy. And that's where she needs to work on her work. She has a worthiness issue. And I think that like... As people, we all have worthiness issues in some shape, form, or another. And I'm not saying that I'm not saying that anybody needs to be perfect, but understanding that it's a journey and understanding that you can fix this and seeking help by getting therapy. I know a lot of Nigerians don't want to do therapy, but therapy can really save her. And I think she needs a lot of therapy. Um, and a lot of people say I saw on social media 
people were reviewing this from an American context, you know, and saying that, well, that polygamy is normal in Africa, so maybe we can't Americanize this. And I think we can Americanize this, because like as someone that, you know, originally my, you know, my family's from Nigeria, I've lived in Nigeria, I just, you know, I lived in Nigeria for the past like four years between 2017 and 2020, but other than that, I used to go to Nigeria every vacation. I'm very exposed to Nigerian culture, and I've had polygamy in my family for generations. And what I will say, polygamy is the reason, in my views, in my view, is polygamy is the reason Nigeria is the way it is today, because this, uh, polygamy destroys families, polygamy destroys people. So, and I and I break this down on my other channel, the Kenemo Show. I talk about how over procreation within black men also attacks black economic empowerment. But that's not what I'm gonna break down here, but I'm talking about how polygamy, so Two-Face having all these women and all these kids all, the, all over the place, right? Not only is it embarrassing to her, it is embarrassing to her in this day and age, it's very embarrassing in Nigeria for a man to do that. But in addition to that, It's affecting black economic empowerment. You know, there's a difference between being rich and being wealthy and creating generational wealth. But if you have, if you spread your seed all over the place and then he dies, then everybody's going to go fight for the money. And what happens? Nothing. You don't create legacy that way, you know. But at the end of the day, it still hurts these women. They live, they're used to living in pain. And what I love about this show is that it's exposing that. And it's showing us that even in South Africa, the standard for women is higher because all the women in, this, in South Africa were like, wow, like this is really terrible, you know? But it shows that a lot of Nigerians are, a lot of Nigerian women are tolerating this nonsense. They're tolerating it. And even though we're seeing a rise in divorces in Nigeria, a lot of Nigerian women are starting to uh, push away from that, and which is a good thing. Um, but those are only the women that can afford to push away from it, that are, are leaving those terrible situations. Um, and I think Nigeria just needs better men. I think we need to raise better men in Nigeria, more emotionally intelligent men, men that are not abusive in those ways, men that, <laughs> men that don't mistreat women. And, and no matter how wealthy they are, they are, like there needs to be a level of accountability. Um, and I feel as though there's a lot of emotional abuse that she's facing from Two-Face, and she's fighting the wrong people. She's fighting Zuri. She's fighting all these other people, but she needs to address it with her man and stop, you know, walking on eggshells around him because she's afraid that he might leave. But if he leaves, let him leave. You're a big enough star on your own. <laughs> you, you are now on Netflix. You can make it on your own. And I'm not trying to break up a, a, a family, but I won't call that a happy home. So, and, I, and it's clear that she has a lot of trauma within, and so she needs to fix that, and she needs to show him how to love her the right way, you know? Not the cheating, not the having kids all over the place, not any of that. Show him how to treat you. And that's kind of like <laughs> my two cents with that show. Like, it was just so, it was so disheartening watching her live through that trauma, watching her, you know, and, and not knowing how to deal with it. Just sort of wearing her trauma. She owns her trauma, which is rare. You don't see that. And she's even showing the world her trauma, which is rare. You don't see that. So I, I do commend her for doing that. Um, but I think the next stage for her is to get, seek the right help, get the therapy that she needs to really work on her self-healing. Because I think she's a very strong woman. She's a really great, I like her as a character. Um, and I just, I feel that she deserves more, but I don't think that she knows that she deserves more. And that's where it's up to her to figure that out. Um, and it's not going to be easy. Nobody says it's going to be easy. Yes, Nigerian society might shun you if you're no longer, you might not be cool anymore if you're no longer married to Two-Face, but what are your priorities? And that's another thing, especially not just, I won't say Nigeria, but in Lagos specifically, because of the level of poverty, the more successful somebody is, the more they're almost like a god and they're glorified and everyone looks to them. You know, everyone looks to them as like, oh wow, like, you know? And so because he's so successful, and if she does leave him, yes, society is gonna be like, oh, she's no longer cool anymore and kind of discard her, but those are not people that you want anyway. <laughs> those are not people that you want in your life anyway. Why would you even wanna be associated with people that would discard you 
You know what I'm saying? And I know that. So I think it's up to her to like not only believe that she's worthy and start from her worthiness, but also create it in her in her career. Prove that she can be a standalone, um, independent, strong, successful woman on her own, right? Um, and I'm not saying that she needs to divorce him or anything. Perhaps that she'll show him, this is who I am, this is what my worthiness is, and maybe he'll say, okay, I want, I want to come with you on this journey. I want to stay with you on this journey. But you have to be willing to sacrifice, you know, everybody else's opinions, society's opinions, and all of that, and to be able to stand on your own two feet and believe in yourself. And that's what I want to see for her. And I hope she gets there. I don't know if she's going to get there, but I really, truly hope that she gets there. Um, and, you know, this is what happens when you put your business out on a reality TV show. Everybody's going to talk about it. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. That's how we can't stop talking about Kanye and Kim. Everybody's going to talk about your business. But I really do. I do. I am praying for her. I am rooting for her. And I hope to see um, her really come into her own. And I love that she's shown other women through her pain and through her struggles. She's kind of shown other Nigerian women that you're not alone because there's so many Nigerian women going through this and not just in Nigeria, all over the world. But she's also, perhaps some women will see this and say, I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to deal with this anymore. And so even though she may not heal, I think that she's definitely helped a lot of women heal. And I think that women in Africa should require better men, you know, and I think men in Africa should be better, like, I can't speak for Africa, I'll say Nigeria, men in Nigeria should strive to be better, so sh should strive to not be abusive, not to be emotionally abusive to these women because of cultural norms, because at the end of the day, if we want to use culture as an example, why do you always have to fly to the UK to America and to all their, to other cultures to get healthcare, to get your cars, to drive on straight roads. If you need to go to all these other developed countries to do get basic necessities on your vacations and all these things, then you should look within and strive to create that within your own countries. Like I'm not talking about South Africa because South Africa has great roads, great infrastructure, all of that. But Nigeria specifically. So people that say, oh, well, this is the Nigerian way, this is the Nigerian culture, you're, you're perpetuating the dysfunction of Nigeria as it is today. Like, we know that some of you, we know that right now in Nigeria, the situation is dire. People don't have electricity, people don't have uh, diesel right now. And I know you people are going to take my words and, and twist it and say, oh, she said there's no electricity in Nigeria. That's not what I said. <laughs> so stop it. What I said is right now, because of the, the fuel scarcity, because of the fuel scarcity, there's limited access to diesel. Why should we even be running on generators? I've made so many docs about this. Go watch my documentaries about the infrastructure issues in Nigeria. But either way, <laughs> to me, if you have to go to the West or wherever else in the world to get basic necessities, then there's you sh like we should be looking within and we should be looking to fix Africa from within, specifically Nigeria. We should be looking to fix it from within. And so stop making the excuse that this is the Nigerian way because clearly the Nigerian way as it is right now does not work. So we need to fix Nigeria right now. And you know, this is what I'll do it. You know, hey, I used to live in Nigeria. I don't have to live there no more. I don't have to live there. I don't have to, you know, this is what I do. I make content, I make documentaries, inspire people to make the change. That's my contribution. Because I need electricity, 24 seven electricity for me to be able to work and do my work. So I like, that's why I left uh, end of 2020. But all in all, great show, really enjoyed it. Um, don't know if I'll be watching the next season, but <laughs> I, was, I'm ple I was pleasantly surprised I was happy that I, I stumbled on it, um, and I've seen all the comments go off on it. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. I know some people are going to get offended by this. That's your business. <laughs> I'll give a, I'll give it. If you want to twist my words, twist my words. That's your business. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. My name is Kenem, and see you next time. Peace.